Otitis media with effusion, ONMI, is the presence of fluid in the middle ear without signs of acute infection. It's most commonly seen in children, but can occur in adults, especially after upper respiratory tract infections or due to eustachian tube dysfunction. OMI develops when the eustachian tube, which normally ventilates the middle ear, becomes dysfunctional. This leads to a buildup of fluid in the middle ear, creating a conductive hearing loss. The condition is typically painless, but may cause a sensation of fullness or hearing difficulties. The diagnosis of OME requires clinical assessment with a focus on otoscopic and specialized diagnostic tests. The first step in evaluating suspected OME is a thorough otoscopic examination. Using a handheld otoscope, you'll typically observe dullness or opacity of the tympanic membrane, air fluid levels, or bubbles behind the eardrum and the eardrum may also appear retracted or slightly immobile when tested with pneumatic otoscopy. For a more detailed view, otomicroscopy is often used, especially in clinical settings. This technique provides a magnified view of the tympanic membrane, making it easier to detect subtle changes like thinning or localized areas of retraction. Tympanometry is a crucial test in the diagnosis of OME. It measures the mobility of the tympanic membrane and the pressure in the middle ear. In patients with OME, tympanometry typically shows a flat tracing, indicating that the tympanic membrane is stiff and fluid is present in the middle ear. Negative middle ear pressure may also be noted in cases with mild eustachian tube dysfunction without full effusion. This is a non-invasive and highly sensitive tool for confirming the presence of middle ear fluid. Hearing loss in OME is typically conductive and ranges from mild to moderate. Audiometry can be performed to quantify this hearing loss, which often shows a mild hearing loss in the affected ears. Audiometry is especially useful in children who present with speech delays or learning difficulties due to hearing impairment. Management of OME is influenced by factors such as the duration of the effusion, the patient's symptoms, and the risk of complications like hearing loss. For most cases of OME, especially when it's recent and asymptomatic, a watchful waiting approach is recommended. About 90% of cases resolve spontaneously within three months. During this period, routine follow-up with serial otoscopy or tympanometry is advised to monitor the resolution of the effusion. The role of medications in OME is limited. Nasal corticosteroids may be considered in patients with underlying allergic rhinitis contributing to eustachian tube dysfunction. Decongestants and antihistamines are generally not recommended as evidence supporting their effectiveness is lacking. In some cases, especially when nasal obstruction is present, nasal saline irrigation may help improve eustachian tube function. When OMI persists beyond three months or is associated with significant hearing loss, speech delay, or other complications, surgical intervention is considered. The primary surgical option is myringotomy with tympanostomy tube insertion. These tubes allow ventilation of the middle ear and prevent further fluid accumulation. In adults, persistent OME should prompt evaluation for nasopharyngeal pathology, particularly nasopharyngeal carcinoma, especially in those with unilateral OME. Referral to an otolaryngologist is indicated if OME persists for more than three months with significant symptoms or hearing loss. There are concerns about speech and language development in children Recurrent OME is observed, suggesting the need for long-term management, possibly with tympanostomy tubes, or adults with unilateral OME should be referred to rule out serious pathology, like tumors of the nasopharynx. OME is a common, but often self-limiting condition. The key to managing it lies in accurate diagnosis, particularly with the help of otomicroscopy and tympanometry, followed by appropriate monitoring and timely intervention when necessary. Surgical management is reserved for persistent or complicated cases.